Hello everyone. In this video, we will see what are deadlocks, how we can identify deadlocks in a running application and how we can avoid deadlocks by carefully following some strategies. Watch this video till the end because I have a surprise challenge for you in the end. So without any further delay, let's start. A deadlock in Java occurs when two or more threads are blocked indefinitely. In this, each thread is waiting for resource held by the other thread. So here we can see the first thread is already holding a lock on resource 1 and it is requesting the lock on resource 2. But if we see the second thread also that holds the lock on resource 2 and requesting for the lock of resource 1. So this is the situation where both of the, these threads will not be able to proceed further in the execution. So they will be stuck there forever. Now let us see a complete code example where deadlock will occur. Here we have two threads T1 and T2 which are created by invoking prepare thread1 and prepare thread2 methods. Let us look at the implementation in detail. In thread1 first it tries to acquire the lock on resource1 if that is successful, then Threadwell will perform some operation using resource 1. That could take some time. So to represent that processing delay, we are making this thread sleep for some time. Now after that processing is complete, Thread1 also needs to get lock on resource 2 while keeping the lock on resource 1. And if it is successful in acquiring the lock on resource 2, then similarly it will do some processing. Once everything is executed, thread1 will start releasing the locks in reverse order. First, it will release the lock on resource2, then on resource1. Now, if we see, the second thread is also behaving same, but the only difference is order of acquiring the resource locks. In case of thread2, it will first acquire the lock on resource2 and then it will request the lock on resource1. Now when both the threads are running in parallel, then there are high chances that they will be blocked forever. And this is due to the order and the way they are acquiring the locks. Both the threads will not release the locks on already locked resources and keeps on waiting for the next resource lock which is not possible. Let me just run this program and show you how these threads are blocked. So here you can see at first thread1 tried to acquire the lock on resource1 and it got the lock on resource1. Then it does some processing using resource1. And at the same time because thread2 is also running in parallel, thread2 acquired the lock on resource2 and also done some processing on resource2. So after this point you can see thread1 is holding a lock on resource1 and thread2 is holding the lock on resource2. but Thread1 trying to acquire lock on the resource which is already held by thread2 and similar for the thread2 as well. So at this point you can see the program execution is stuck. Both the threads are stuck at this point because neither thread1 is releasing its previous lock on resource1 and nor thread2 is doing the same. So due to this both of these threads are in a deadlock situation and program will not proceed further. Now we have seen the code thoroughly and we know that it is a deadlock but identifying deadlock through code analysis is in big application is not a viable solution and most of the time it is not at all possible because the big application will have a large code base and you cannot thoroughly examine each and everything in that code. And also in case of multi-threading you never know when the control will shift to which particular block. So then how we can identify if a deadlock has occurred in our running application. We can always analyze thread dump of any running application. In this video we will be analyzing thread dump of our application using a tool which is already provided by Java which is Visual VM. So Visual VM is a great tool which is available in Java itself. Let me just run this defective code again then we will start checking the details in Visual VM. So this is the interface of Visual VM. So here we can see uh, in this local section it will tell us if any new Java application is running there with the process ID details and we will be able to see 
almost all of the detail of that particular running Java application or Java program. So now currently you can see one Visual VM is running and one NetBeans IDE process is running. So let me just start my Java program here where deadlock will occur and then we will see how we can analyze the thread dump. Using Java Visual VM, it is very easy to identify deadlock because it will straight away tell us whether there is any deadlock identified or not. We will see in more detail uh, how we can check that in the thread dump as well. Now just let me just restart this particular program and then we will be able to see that detail here as well. So here uh, the launcher is currently running. After that, one process will be running which is that particular program. So yes, this is the deadlock demo class which we have run and we can see now it is stuck at this point. That means a deadlock has occurred. Now let us see this in detail. So double click on that particular program ID entry. It will show you the detail on the right hand side panel. So here you can see a lot of details. You can monitor your complete JVM like heap, perm gen, uh, what is the total number of threads, how, how much CPU it is using, everything. But what we are interested in, we are interested in thread dumps. For that, we need to go to this threads tab and there we it will show us all the threads which are currently running. And here you can see here it has already identified that one deadlock has occurred. So you can see it written in this red letters deadlock detected. So to take now we need to just take a thread dump to get more detail where that deadlock actually occurred what are the threads which are contributing to that deadlock but we know from our program itself that these are the two threads thread 0 and thread 1 which are actually in deadlock now let me just take a thread dump so to take a thread dump there is a button there on the right hand side just click on that thread dump so it will show open a new tab here which is a thread dump with the timestamp so here let us just analyze this thread dump it will give us the complete detail of all the threads which are currently running in our application. So here let me go to the end itself because that information will be available in the end. So here you can see found one Java level deadlock. So this is the deadlock which uh, this tool has identified and the contributing threads as well. So you can see thread 0 and thread 1 are the two threads which are contributing in this deadlock. Here it will also tell us what locks these thread are already having and what lock they are requesting. So here you can see for thread 0 information it is waiting to lock a thread which is ending with 950 and it has already locked one object which is ending with 960. So if we see in case of thread 1 it is actually holding the lock of 950 and it is waiting for the lock which is ending with 960. So both of these threads are holding a lock on an object which is required by both and requesting the lock for the object which is already held. So in this way easily we can analyze the th thread dump and identify what are the threads which are actually in the deadlock situation so that it can be properly fixed in the code. Now we know what are deadlocks and how we can analyze the thread dump to identify the contributing threads in the deadlock as well. Now let us see few strategies using which we can avoid the deadlocks or fix the issue. The first one is resource lock ordering. So always acquire the resources in a consistent order to prevent circular dependencies. This way threads won't be waiting indefinitely for the resources held by the other resources. So as we have seen in our previous example there was a circular dependency. Another approach could be using timeouts. So use timeouts when acquiring resources if a thread is unable to acquire a resource within a specified time. It can release the acquired resource and retry. That will prevent the deadlocks. We should use thread pools and executor frameworks to manage thread and resources effectively. This can help in controlling the resource allocation and reducing the likelihood of thread pool. Now in this video I will just give an example of reordering the locks in which what we will do we will change the order of locks. So earlier if you see thread 1 was requesting resource 1 and then resource 2 but thread 2 was requesting resource 2 and resource 1 in this order. But in this case in the fix what we are doing we are first 
for the thread two we are changing the order of resources so the thread two will also request the lock on resource one first and then resource two in this way a situation will never come where thread two is holding a lock on some resource which thread one is requesting and thread one is holding a lock on resource which thread two is holding so using this simple trick by changing the order of the locks we can eliminate the deadlock thread so here in this example you can see the thread one first acquires lock on resource one and then it does some processing after that it requests on the lock for resource two and then does some processing and in the reverse order it will release the locks in case of thread two there is a change at first it will request the lock on resource one and after the processing it will request the lock on resource two and then release the locks in reverse order so here what will happen any thread which acquires the lock on resource one will start its execution and the other thread will have to wait but that wait will not be an indefinite wait because the first thread will complete its execution and release the lock on that resource and then the next thread will be able to pick it up and execute further so here let me just rerun this program and show you that the processing is completed so here you can see uh, both thread one thread two trying to acquire the lock on resource one but thread one got the lock so that means thread two will have to wait until thread one completes its execution so here thread one does the processing using resource one then acquire the lock on resource two after the complete processing on resource two as well it has released the locks on a resource two and resource one so at this point thread two was waiting for uh, resource one to become free so then thread two lock the resource one and does its processing similar for the resource two so here you can see the situation of deadlock has been avoided by just changing the order of locks so we need to make sure in our code if it is feasible to make sure uh, to keep the ordering in such a way that it should not result in a deadlock situation now in the beginning of the video i have told you that there is one challenge for you so now in most of the time we may not be able to change the ordering itself so there is a rigid requirement that the thread two must acquire the lock on resource two first so that means there is a high possibility that deadlock will occur so how we can make sure that both the threads complete their processing without just quitting because that's a very easy way we can add a timeout so that uh, any thread waiting for some time uh, should uh, skip that particular execution because the lock is not available but that is not the case in case of real applications if a thread starts its execution and it does not acquire the lock it cannot skip the execution altogether we have to make sure that the execution happened but we also need to make sure that the deadlock does not happen because if deadlock happens your whole application will be frozen so challenge for you is prepare a solution using simple locks in java and make sure that the deadlock does not happen uh, the locking order should be in the same way thread one first acquires resource one then resource two and thread two should acquire first on resource two then on resource one so make sure that the execution is also completed for both the threads and deadlock situation also does not occur so this is a challenge for you you can share your code in the comment section once you have completed it and uh, in my next video i will create a very small video just to give you the solution of this particular challenge so i'll be waiting for your solution in the comment section Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions or any queries, please let me know in the comment section. And also don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and keep spreading the knowledge. Once again, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding.